Hi, this is a video response for Kurt, who was very courteous, very nice, very uh, gentlemanly, uh, very articulate in his words. So I decided to answer him back with a video response because he asked so kindly. He asked two questions. Number one, how do I know God is real? Number two, if God is real, how can he know for sure without a shadow of a doubt that God is real? Now, these questions obviously are very deep questions. If I can just tell you two things in two seconds, then life would be quite easy. But as it stands, certain things in life take a little bit of diligence. Just like somebody who wants to become a doctor, they need to, you know, show persistence for a while and then they graduate. Just like anything in life, nothing good comes easy, but only through perseverance or only through uh, not giving up can someone really know whether something is real or not, especially when it comes to God. You know, you're not going to like put in 50 cents, pull a you know, pull a, push a button or pull a lever and have it like a candy come out. Oh, okay, God's real, you know. You want answers from God? You want to know He's real? That's the same questions I was asking myself once when I was 24 years old. Right now I'm 36 uh, years old. I've been uh, with God for 12, 13 years now. But initially, I was never raised religious at all. My family was like the least religious family in the world. My dad was just like doing his own thing. My mom, her own thing. And so when I decided that you know what I'm gonna to try to search for God but I'm not gonna to go to church because I'm not gonna go in fact that's the first thing I told God I went outside and I looked up to the sky and I said and this is answering part one of your question how do I know God is real initially I didn't know God was real how could anyone know God is real like totally no you can think he's real you can assume he's real you can kind of fake it to yourself blah 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 but to me I was always the kind of person where you know what I need to know I need I need God to be real to me first before I'm going to like you know commit myself to all these you know external requirements which are not any actually really requirements from God it was just like man-made requirements okay go to church this this is or the other it's all a bunch of you know uh, man-made tradition anyway so basically here is my journey to God and how I know for without a shadow of a doubt that God is real why because he answered me I'm talking physically he literally I've seen Christ. He's been revealed to me, not just in dreams, but in awake visions. Talking about like the fabric of space time opened up, like unzipped. I mean, as real as it gets, man. Like, you know, I know that's kind of hard for you to believe, but let me just start off from the beginning. Let me just tell you my journey to God. I'm going to try to keep it quick because you asked me to. Uh, I went outside and I looked up to the sky and I had my Bible in my hand and I, I made, I told Christ this. I go, Jesus, God. I don't know if you're real. I think you might be real. Here's why I'm here to see if you are or aren't. Uh, I go if if uh, if you are real. Uh, I'm asking you to do three things for me. Number one, I need a new heart. And the reason I said that is because I had a problem loving people. I mean, I really couldn't love people. I could I could give a damn honestly about people, man. Like you know, like I could think I love them, but I can care less. You know, I could even barely even love my own life and myself and my own mother who was sick and dying upstairs yet alone other people so I told God you know what and I had a problem with that I was in a scene where there was a lot of people that, that were really close-knit with each other everyone seemed to have a genuine love for each other but me I wasn't like that I, I could never really love easily so I had a problem with that so I told God I go number one I, I told him I'm gonna read your New Testament it's 200 pages I can handle that 200 pages I could do that you know and it says be holy okay for, for f I'm gonna read five pages a day for 40 days that's my deal, God, with you. I'm going to read your word for 40 days. I'm going to get on my knees. I'm going to humble myself. You know, I'm going to get on my knees every night, and I'm going to ask you for the same three things I'm asking you now. Number one, a new heart that can love. Number two, your Holy Spirit. It says in the, in the word I had heard that the Holy Spirit will come into you, and I'll be one with you and you with me. And the Father and I will come make our home with you. So I said, that's a pretty bold promise. You know what, Jesus, if you're going to manifest yourself to me in my life to the point where I know you and the Father are real, then that'll do it for me, you know? So number two, I wanted the Holy Spirit. Number three, I wanted the kingdom of heaven revealed to me. You know, whatever that entailed. I'm like, okay, you know what? If I die, there might be a heaven. There might not be a heaven. Again, God, I'm not going to go to church all my life hoping that when I die, I made the right call. It's just not going to work for me, you know? If, if this is going to work out, I need a new heart that can love. I need your Holy Spirit. Literally, Jesus, I need your spirit to come within me to make two into one. As it says, that's what will happen. Two will become one. So that's what I want. Number three, I want the, the the kingdom of heaven revealed to me. And it says the kingdom of heaven is within you. The kingdom of heaven can be found within you. So that's what I'm asking for. I'm asking for heaven to come through me, to me. I don't know how it's going to happen. 
It's what I'm asking for. It says, see Kevin, and here I am, you know? So first day passed, I read five pages, got down on my knees at night, asked for the same three things. Day two, day three, day five, day 10, day 15, day 20, day 25. Still nothing, not a peep, not a whisper, nothing from God. At this point, I'm 150 pages in to the New Testament. And at this point, I have cut off all the movies, all the music from the world. Because, you know, it said that you must hate the world and everything in the world or your love of the Father is not in you. So I told myself, all right, you know what? I was in the Marine Corps. I, I, I know what it is to go through boot camp. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to treat these 40 days like boot camp. I'm going to make it a boot camp for God. You know, I'm going to cut. I went to work. I came home. Even on my break at work, everyone was shocked. Like, hey, why aren't you smoking cigarettes with us? Why aren't you doing this? Why aren't you doing that? You know, I said, oh, you know what? I'm just doing my own thing, you know. And I would just go around the back, sit, sit on the staircase alone. I would open up my Bible. I would start reading it on my breaks. If nothing more than just to finish it sooner. Sooner I finish, sooner I will know, hey, you know what? This ain't real. I can move on with my life. But what am I asking for? Am I asking God to just pop up in front of me like a magic trick? No, I was asking for a new heart because I told God, you know what? I need a new heart to love. This heart doesn't know how to love real well. There's problems with me. There's spiritual problems inside of me. I'm full of anger. I'm full of frustration. You know, I need a new heart. I need your Holy Spirit to come inside of me to make Jesus known to me, literally. And I need the kingdom of heaven revealed. You know, at this point, I was 25, 26 days into it. I was asking at least three, four times a day. I'm a very realistic guy, man. I'm a very realistic person. I don't, I'm not very delusional. I was never into church or making things up for myself or pretending or faking things. I'm a very straightforward kind of guy. You know what, God, if you're real, then these things will just be like flat out real to me. Like, like this beanie right here, like here, oh, it's real, you know? Like that's how real I would want God to be. And that's how I told him I need you to be that real for me in order for me to believe. But until then, I can't believe until that happens. I can hope. You know, hope to me comes before faith or belief. The word faith, never understood that word faith. Okay, what is faith? You know, you believe in something blindly. Well, to what extent? You know, Jesus said in, in, in John, the book of John, I will reveal myself to you. Sure, so I can't, you know, once that happens, I can believe. But until then, all I can do is hope. Hope that heaven is real. Hope that God is real. And hope this Holy Spirit is real. And all the things that I'm asking for will happen to me. So here I am, the 26th night of asking. And I had a friend come over. And that friend that came over was my party buddy up until a year ago, a year before this point. I had gone sober for like a year. And, uh, but before that, I was going out with him, partying, raving, you know, doing drugs, ecstasy, drinking, this, that, and the other. So he came over that night, and uh, he came over, un over unannounced. And, um, so, and he asked my mom to sleep over before I could even say no, because I didn't want any contact with anyone. So I didn't really have a choice about it. He came over. You know, he busted out a weed pipe. He started smoking some weed outside on the balcony. I told him, you can't do it in my room. You know, he, he tried to tempt me into it. I told him, no, I don't want it. You know, get away from me. Get, get the stuff away from me. You know, I told him, maybe in a few weeks, I'll get back into it. Because, again, I was going holy for 40 days, man. 40 days, I was, only, I was going to be like Jesus in the desert. Nothing at all. Read the word, ask, and continue till the end. Let's see what happens. Keep an open mind till then, right? I mean, what are we without our objectivity? I don't have objectivity. I'm no different than my dog right here next to me, you know. Uh, dogs are all in instinct. They're not, you know, into like objectivity, hope, and all this stuff. You know what? So that night, I, I asked again, nothing differently. Read my five pages. I think I might have read a little bit more that night. Uh, you know, I read, you know, Jesus, give me this Holy Spirit. You know, I, I hope you're real. You know, I'm, 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 I wish you're real, you know. And, you know, I'm, at this point, I was asking for one more thing other than the three things. I was asking for the living water. And Jesus said in John that, you know, he told a woman at the well that if you asked for living water, I would have given it to you and you would thirst no more. And what I liked about the living water, it said in the book of John, like from your belly will burst out rivers of living water. And I was studying a lot of the Chinese chi and meditation chi and all this from the belly, the energy. So I figured, huh, this sounds to me like this is some kind of enlightenment thing that's going to happen from the belly will burst out rivers of living water it sounds pretty intense now whether it's going to happen or not i don't know but i'm going to ask for it so i included that in my prayers probably the last two weeks again i can ask god for something right now hey god you know give me this give me that or do this or do that but if i get on the ground put my knees on the ground and i bow down something happens to the soul something happens to the spirit when you bow down it, it, humbleness comes upon you upon me now, I can ask God all I want right now, but if, if I bow down, it's going to be in a, in a humble state, in a more humble state. As humble as I can be, 
as humble as anyone can be if you bow down it's going to be a lot more humble so again that's what I was asking for those four things now what made that 26th night so significant was that my friend who, who had come over he had asked me to go raving the night before he said he had some ecstasies and I told him you know what it's been a long time since I've done that I ain't gonna go near that stuff again you know I don't want anything to do with it and he was like okay that's cool you know uh, so but what happened was that morning when I woke up 27th morning I thought I was dreaming I immediately pinched myself a few times because literally from my belly I mean I'm talking about it says living water will burst out I'm talking about rivers of like bliss and fire and power were just flushing up my torso and up into my into my you know neck region and it was only when I would read another word out of the Bible after that one word the first word that I read this power literally entered my mind pushed out all my thoughts I mean I'm talking about real physical power like flushing through me like even till right now and I thought 100% that this friend of mine had put ecstasy in my water I had him to the ground like this like arm Armin don't BS me man I know you did something what did you put in my water he denied it of course and I didn't believe him I kicked him out and I just sat on my bed waiting for this energy this love this torrent of emotion this bursting through me to go away because you know that's how drugs work because I, I was again I was positive he did something either that or I was still dreaming so I was either pinching myself or I was just waiting for this feeling to go away 18 hours later I'm sitting on my bed and the feeling is growing actually it's not going down it's actually increasing that night I don't know how I went to sleep I was just flying but I, I went to bed that night I had a dream of Jesus walking down my street 50 feet tall in a white gown releasing seven stars from his right hand and then the next day I would read in Revelation for the first time of my life I would read about Jesus being the one who has the seven stars in his hand I saw that before I even read it but again even though I was feeling this feeling of just immense love and connection to God now that was real I still wasn't convinced I was like okay maybe I don't know you know then I had another dream then I had another dream and then I had a vision wide awake I was sitting in my room reading the book of Daniel and I couldn't move, man. I couldn't move while I was reading the book of Daniel. It says, and Daniel had a vision. As soon as I saw that, I couldn't move. I just remember all the audio kind of went away from the world. And I saw a little bright light in the middle of my room, like a little speck, like a dot, like a star, tiny little star. And this thing expanded into like, almost looked like a doorway, man. Honestly, I'm not kidding you. God is very supernatural and he's willing to show people everything. And you know, what am I tell you? Out came three people, a girl and two guys, angels. Yeah, she came and put her arm around me, told me God is love, as my bedroom was flooded with love and emotion and just pure ecstasy, I'm talking pure bliss. And, you know, and as I looked through my Bible, all I had cried throughout this three-week process, mainly because I was really bored and in pain, man, because I, was, I cut off all the pleasure and my tears had turned into white bread, sweet like honey when I ate it, like manna, you know. And, you know, having more visions and dreams of Jesus and this feeling that I'm talking about, this living water from within, 13 years later, it's no less now than it was that day. In fact, I could tell you that it's more. It's increased in me. It's become to the point where, you know, like, it's engulfed me completely. And, you know, Jesus has come into my dreams hundreds of times. I've had many visions, wide awake. I've had so many supernatural things happen in my life where it's impossible for me not to believe. God has manifested himself, quite literally, surpassing all time and space, man, in, in every which way. So that's how I know God is real. Why? Because when I asked for the Holy Spirit, the living water, and for His Spirit to come make Himself one with me, to give me a new heart, and to make me love like He loves, and to know Him personally, all that happened, man. Jesus came to me. I've seen Him also in the body. He came to me once, flushed straight in front of me, sitting there, boom, you know? I could tell you what, what, what color hair He has. Is that what you want to know? Why don't you ask Him about that? I'm not Him. I'm not going to reveal all these things, hidden things that He revealed to me. But the point of the matter is this. The gospel, 200 pages. You call yourself a scholarly man. You call yourself, uh, you know, uh, an objective person. Then open up the New Testament. I don't care if you've read it before. It doesn't matter because your motive was wrong. Did you ask for the Holy Spirit? Did you admit to God, hey, you know what, God? I got lust in my heart. Or I got the... Everyone's got some problems, man. Everyone's got some, some kind of a sin that they can't get away from. Whether it's covetousness, wanting money, lust, whatever it is, you can confess it. Say, God, you know what? You know, I need a new heart, okay? Give me the heart of Christ. Give me the Holy Spirit of Christ. Take away my spirit and give away, give me the Spirit of Christ. I don't know how that's going to happen, but that's all I'm asking for. Living water, kingdom of heaven revealed, 
which he actually showed me the kingdom of heaven too, four to four, five, four to five different areas of heaven, including I think it was Paul that I met. Paul, he was in a spirit body made out of light. Not he looked human, but he was made out of light. Literally, like what lightning is made out of, what stars, that same material light. You know, that's the other world. And he, he showed me Hades, you know, where Satan and the other fallen angels are too. I know it sounds crazy. I'm telling you now. And I'm like, I know what's coming my way now. You know, but I know how wild and outrageous and outlandish this sounds. But if you get on your knees and if you just say to yourself, you know what? I don't know. I don't know. You know, my doubts, I, you know, I even told God this in prayer. You know what, God, I'm asking for these things, but I can't really believe it. But help me with my disbelief and forgive me for my disbelief. If, if any part of me is asking insincerely, forgive me because my heart is insincere. I can't believe until these things happen. I'm asking for something that I can't even believe can happen. And, you know, that's the, that's the issue here. That, that until you give me these things... I can't fully believe. And if you give me these things, I can't believe. Let me let my dog out. Hold on for a sec. So that's what it was, man. Twenty. I, I, I told God I'm going to read five pages a day for 40 days. I'm going to ask for these three things. I'm going to get on my knees. I'm going to quit the drinking, smoking, everything. I ain't going to tell a single person what I'm doing. Number one, it's none of their business. Number two, I don't want them to think I'm crazy. Number three... Well, the first two, you know, are good enough. That's number three, because I don't want them to think I'm crazy. And it's none of their business. If God is real, if he's going to do all these things for me, then he's going to do them for me. You know, and even if it does happen, they're not going to believe me anyways. You know, who is? You know, my, my sister couldn't believe me. My mom believed me a little. My dad believed me. But that's about it, man. No, no one in my household believed me. And I'll tell you this much. I've pretty much messaged roughly about 100,000 people with my testimony so far. I have nine YouTube accounts. And I've messaged about, I used to message three to 500 people a day for the first year. And I've messaged a lot of people. And there's been a lot of people coming back. People who cussed me out. People who posted for six months. They posted, F you, you're an idiot, you're delusional, blah, blah, blah. And then finally, out of almost spite, they agreed. Okay, I know what, I will read and ask. Let's see what happens. You know, I'm going to prove you wrong. And through proving me wrong, they found the kingdom of heaven. Quite literally coming back and posting apologies, saying I'm sorry, you know, you, you know, telling all the other people, dude, I thought I thought he was crazy, but no, I feel this living water now. It feels better than the heroin I did once five years ago. It's crazy. I see Jesus in my dreams too. I have visions. You know, I feel like I'm one with heaven. This, that, or the other. Th that's the only question you should have in your mind right now is asking yourself this question. Have I read the gospel all the way, the New Testament, while refraining from sin? That means sexual immorality. If you're married, by all means, sleep with your wife. But if not, put away the porn, put away everything else, be holy for 40 days. For 40 days, suffer. Don't drink. Don't get high. Whatever. If you don't do those things, wonderful. More power to you. This will be easier for you. But if you're a man of temptation like I was, if you have things that tempt you, put them away. For those 40 days, you walk that narrow, narrow path. You ask out loud to Jesus for the Holy Spirit, living water, kingdom of heaven to come upon you, and for you to be one with Him in spirit and in truth, for Him to be as real to you as He is to Adam. You keep repeating these in prayer on your knees every night to show humbleness. You don't want to bow down to the King of the universe, then why should He reveal Himself? Because you know what? There's power in, in holiness. There's power in bowing down to the King, because He does anoint you, and He does lift you up, and He does reveal to you all things. Jesus isn't there just to be worshipped. He's there to be known as a friend. He makes you a friend. He makes you like one with Him, you know? And He's shown me what's to come. He's shown me the kingdom to come. He's shown me the glory that's to come. And He says, my saints, my saints will rule the, the world with me. He's given me glimpses of what that's going to be like. Not only that, but the Spirit in me now is still, is still with me, you know? He's still with me. He's still in me. The whole heaven within. Yeah, man, right from right here, from my gut, bursting out right around my mind, giving me the peace and comfort, filling me with the oil of gladness that it's called. And that's what it's about. So, so Kurt, I, I challenge you like a brother, like a friend, like an honest, almost like a scientist, man. Bust open the New Testament, Matthew, first page. Five to ten pages. If you want to read ten pages a day, you'll be done in 20 days. Can you give God 20 to 40 days of holiness? I don't know if you drink. I don't know if you smoke. You know, I don't know how much, you know, what you're into. But you don't even have to fast. As far as fasting goes... That's all. That's up to you. Yeah, I fasted. I fasted once a week. One day a week, I didn't eat from morning till night. 
maybe twice a week. You know, I didn't starve myself. I didn't have the power to fast. After the Holy Spirit came, sure, I fasted for like three, five, seven, fourteen days at a time. But that's different. That after the Holy Spirit comes. But you must fast from the world as far as the worldly habits you have and the pleasures you get, the comfort you have from the world. Fast from that. Read the Word. Keep asking for these things. And let me see you finish the entire New Testament without Jesus coming through. I'll tell you right now, Kurt, you'll be the first person. If you sincerely do repent from the sins that, that you're accustomed to. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not judging you. I'm saying we all have things that we like of the world, you know. If you're into like whatever you're into, get out of your comfort zone, man. You know, like if you're into watching like violent, you know, martial arts stuff, don't. For 40 days, these aren't... For these 40 days, make them different. Go for long walks. I used to read like two, three pages and go for like an hour or two walk. And then I used to come home. I used to read another couple pages then go for another hour or two walk. You know, I, I plan to read the whole five pages a day for 40 days. But I actually started reading more than that. You know, I started hitting about seven to ten pages a day at the end. And you know what? He came through. He came through with flying colors. And you know what? He still comes through with flying colors. And uh, again, I've seen tons of people come through with the exact same testimony. Not the exact same testimony that I have, but quite similar. Feeling something from their belly, shooting up, seeing Christ in dreams and visions. And quite literally telling me that they feel like they're one with God now. That they're actually connected to the, to, to the, to the heavens. Somehow, spiritually, God has taken their spirit, dipped it in heaven, and put it back in their body. And now they're born again. Born again ain't just some word. That people say, oh yeah, you know what, I, I think I'm going to believe in Jesus now. I'm born again. That's a load of garbage. Born again isn't something that you proclaim. Born again is something that God does. God does it. He changes you. He gives you a new heart, new spirit, new mind. Gives you a quick mind so you're able to like catch up with everyone's thoughts, your own thoughts. Right now, the way I see it, the old person I used to be, my mind was a little bit slow. I used to get anxious. I used to get this, that, and the other. But he's giving me like a quick mind and like a quick spirit. In, in terms of being able to come up with things, uh, replies, whatever. But that's just the uh, that's just uh, you know the the symptoms of the Holy Spirit. But, but the most important thing is love. The love that I was missing. I'm talking about not a human kind of love. He said, "I'll give you love that'll transcend and surpass all knowledge of what it means to be loved." And I'm talking about that's what happens. A love so grand that it just glows out of you. That it just flows out of you. And you know, like I. I like when I pray for people and I put my hands on them, they get, you know, God heals them, man. It's just because that's what God is. God is power. The, the, the gospel, the New Testament is not a question of words. Like it says, Paul even said it. It says, uh, it says the gospel that we preach is not a matter of words, but of power. And it's all about that power of God, to, to receive that power from Him. To stay, wait, and pray until you're clothed with power from on high. Until I give you a new spirit and a new heart and a new mind. The mind of Christ, Paul said, I'll give you the mind of Christ. I'll give you the Holy Spirit. So how can you find it? Commit to reading. You know what? Here's the Bible, dude. You know what? This is the Old Testament. All of this is the Old Testament. And all this, this thin area right here, this is the New Testament right here. This, this little bit. This is 192 pages in my Bible. You know? You have eyes. You can read. You have a mouth. You can ask for the Holy Spirit, living water, kingdom of heaven to come upon you, and for you to be one with, with, with heaven and God and Christ. You can get on your knees and ask, hey, you know what, Jesus, uh, forgive me for my disbelief. Uh, humble yourself. Ask for it and just bow down and just stay low for a few minutes. Get up and start reading and do it all over again. Do it all over again. Get to the end of the New Testament. Get to the end of the New Testament. Asking Him for what I told you to ask for before sleeping. And let me see what happens by the time you finish. If you finish and nothing happens, man, then I'll say, you know what, bro? You were right, dude. I, but I know this much, man. If you're actually repentant from your, your ways, if you have certain sins that you like, and, and if you drink, or there's nothing wrong with drinking, man, at all. But these 40 days is not for you to enjoy. These 40 days is like Jesus' 40 days in the desert. You see? He went to the desert willfully suffering away from the world when we don't have pleasure from the world that's kind of like suffering for us humans so that's what these 40 days is about i'm not telling you sex is wrong i'm not telling you anything is wrong i'm just telling you you want to come to god forget it all good and bad drop everything even the good you know god doesn't want you to fast from evil he wants you not to do evil but he wants you to fast from the good things too from life why? I don't know. Maybe to suffer a little bit more. To feel a little bit more discomfort. So when he does fill you with this, 
it'll just have that much of more of a dynamic. So when he comes into you, when he fills you, you'll be like that much more blown away. And then, like it says, you don't have to go anywhere to worship. For the Father is seeking those to worship Him in truth and in spirit. So then once He puts that into you, you'll always be in a state of worship. Whether you're waking up in the morning, driving down the street, you'll always have that living connection with the living God. So it doesn't matter if you go to church or don't go to church, all that stuff, secondary. None of that matters. What matters most is honesty. You want God to be real for you. All these people that claim to be Christian, I ask them, do you feel the kingdom of heaven upon you? Do you taste the living water? They're like, huh? I'm like, you don't know God. You can't tell me, huh? Either you feel the living water and you have the spirit of Christ in you, or you're a faker. You go to church all your life. The, you know, atheists to me are way more honest people than these kinds of Christians that go to church every day, every Sunday, pretending, you know? At least you're truthful. You're like, well, you know what? Why should I believe in God? Yeah, why should you? Why should you? Until God gives you this, why should you believe? So I'm not asking you to believe. I'm asking you to hope. You're capable of hoping for God to give you these. A hope for a God that you might think is not real. But there's a 1% chance in there that you might think that God is real. Stick to that 1% for a little while, man. Just for a little while. Read the whole gospel asking for what I said. And you'll know. You'll know one way or the other, right? So let's see you to either take me up on this challenge or tell me, no, nah, I don't want to try it. Because I don't believe God is real, so I'm not going to try it. I'm telling you, Jesus said, you knock and the door will be open for you. That knocking process is exactly what I told you right now. Forsake everything for a little while, read the gospel, and only ask for the things that I said ask for, because those are the only things. Jesus said, first seek the kingdom of God, seek my righteousness and my Holy Spirit to be one with you, and then everything else will be given to you. So you do that, Kurt, and you convince me. You know, then you, I'll tell you, hey, you know, you're an honest man, you know, you are an honest man. You actually went there, you forsook all your sins and all your pleasures, and for a short time, you read the whole gospel asking out loud. Then I'll be, I'll be a very happy person, because, why? Because on Judgment Day, I'll know that Kurt did this. Now, whether God gives it to you or not, I don't know, I think he will, because he, every single person who tries, he comes to them. But even if he doesn't, at least I'll know, you know what, man, you tried. You did, you did your end of the bargain. You forsook comfort, the world. You just dedicated yourself, and you did it. I don't even want you to publicly tell me you're going to do this. I don't care to be right or wrong or this or the other. I want you to be honest with yourself and say, you know what? Have I done this? Have I asked for these? Have I asked for heaven to clothe me? Have I sought heaven and hated this world? Have I forsook my habits and read the word asking for the Holy Spirit to come inside of me to be one with Jesus? To actually know Him personally? You know, did I admit to God, hey, you know what, God, I am evil. His heart's evil. It's just, it is the way it is, you know? Maybe I was born with it. Maybe it's not your fault, but you know what? It sure as heck is your problem. It's our problem. It's not my fault I was born this way, but it's my problem because I couldn't love. It's my problem because I couldn't, like, live anymore in, in a world where it was nothing but money-making and covetousness and this, that, or the other, judging people on how much they make, and I was just sick of it all. I wanted to know if God was real, so I asked him for what he said ask for, and man, did he ever come through in flying colors. So, Kurt, God be with you, man, if you decide to take me up on this. And uh, I'll be praying for you if you do decide to go for this. And I know that you won't be disappointed because the living God does what he promises. But will you? Will you do what, what he said to do to find it? That's for, that's for us to find out. And God bless you. Walk in love, my brother. And again, thank you for being so nice. And thank you for uh, being courteous and not judgmental. Peace.